Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. It's the 27th of October, and as always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information. You can do that easily by calling the Alaska Weather Information Line, 1-800-472-0391. You can always find us online. Weather.gov slash Alaska is the easiest place to go, and then once you click on the map, you'll be taken to your nearest weather forecast office, whether that be Fairbanks, Juneau, or here in Anchorage. Now, uh, once you get to that point, if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll be able to find the Alaska uh, TV weather page there. It has all of the maps from what you'll see tonight and a link to this show. If you're running a little late and don't catch it on the, on the television this evening, you can always check the YouTube broadcast and subscribe to that because what that will let you do is get a notification on your computer or on your mobile device that the show is ready to watch. And that could happen as early as about 7 o'clock or so some evenings, maybe a little bit later toward 8 o'clock on others there. But either way, you can get that alert and set that up so it meets your needs no matter what part of Alaska you're watching from. Uh, now, if you can't find what you need, you have a question about what you see, or just have some general weather information you'd like to share anytime you like, david.snyder at noaa.gov, and I'm happy to serve you. Here's a look at what's going on across Alaska tonight. Across northern sections of southeast, a flood advisory is now posted. We're expecting that some places could see as little as one inch of rain. That doesn't sound so bad, but others could see as much as six to seven. And those will be places like Pelican, maybe even in downtown Juneau, uh, where this atmospheric river, a very narrow channel of very high density moisture is working right toward northern parts of southeast. Now, the system that's bringing that to you in northern southeast is the same system that is bringing strong winds across south central Alaska. High wind warnings have expired now across south central, but for areas northward across the Alaska range, those high winds should continue at least until about 10 o'clock tonight. Uh, we'll see if uh, that expires as we get into the overnight hours, but don't be surprised for breezy and gusty conditions to continue into the early morning. However, until we get through that 10 o'clock hour, at least southerly winds gusting to occasionally as high as 70 miles per hour that could be possible. That includes the Denali area, Deltana and Tanana Flats region, all the way across the eastern Alaska range and passes. Now a look up north, you see areas of yellow for the central and eastern interior from the Yukon Flats all the way to the south facing slopes of the Brooks Range, toward Bettles, down toward Tanana, and including the middle Tanana Valley and the Fairbanks area. Fairbanks, you could be and will be looking at pockets of freezing rain mixing in with snow. By the time you get to the end of Friday, you might see as much as one to two inches of new snow there. Probably looking forward to that after a blistering hot day with temperatures in the 40s, thanks to those strong and gusty winds moving over the mountains. Now for the white mountains, you could see another two to four inches of snow in those areas. And in some cases, maybe as much as four to eight inches of snow for some regions a little bit um, north and west of the uh, middle Tanana Valley. Out west, we have a winter storm warning that should expire later tonight. Storm totals there could reach as much as six to eight inches. And we're also expecting a new winter storm warning here to uh, affect places in the lower and middle Yukon, as well as the upper Kuskokwim around McGrath. Six to eight inches of snow mixed in with some freezing rain, generally of about a quarter inch or less is possible there. And for the northwest coast, from Barrow down toward Atkasuk and westward Wainwright all the way down to Point Hope. A winter weather advisory is in effect for you because of strong winds. Easterlies, 35 to 40 miles per hour, will blow and drift any snow around the region on top of it still snowing. So we're not going to reach blizzard conditions just yet. However, uh, conditions may be tricky to travel. And so make sure you have a plan if you're traveling there and make sure you're tracking your loved ones and friends. Make sure they get to where they need to be and make sure you know who's coming your way. So. Uh, you're not out uh, struggling to find people out there in the blowing snow. 
Here's a look at the weather pattern right now. Here's the atmospheric river. You can see the very bright band of clouds moving north and east into northern sections of southeast. That will happen tonight and tomorrow with heavier rainfall really affecting northern parts of southeast in the next 24 to 48 hours. You can see the clearing taking place behind that front as it moves across northern parts of the Gulf. And then a lot of moisture, a lot of wind, and a lot of heat moving northward across the interior here. So once again, Fairbanks today with winds coming off of the Alaska Range back in the mid 40s at least today because of that down sloping wind and warming effect taking place there. Up north we've got easterly winds wrapping into low pressure here in the overall weather system. That's creating the blowing snow for you. And out west we've got a lot of cold air coming in behind this weather system creating the potential for that snow to fall across the upper Kuskokwim, across the lower and middle Yukon valleys, and of course across northwestern Alaska, and eventually the central and northern interior. So just a whole lot going on with this powerful low. Now, as you've been tracking this for the last several days, this low pressure system here at 983 millibars was previously in the 930 range out here across the southern Bering. That's a big storm, and so no wonder it's filling in with all of the wind rushing in across south central Alaska today. Gus and the hillside region were in the 16, 70 mile an hour range there, and a lot of customers lost power as a result of that on the hillside. Rain is piling in now across the northern Gulf and into parts of southeastern Alaska. Again, watch for that to continue. A frontal boundary here across the Yukon Valley and just north is keeping that cold air locked in place, and it will stay there, but as that warm and wet air creeps in underneath, as snow falls down through that, it melts and then freezes on contact. That's going to be an issue for the middle Tanana Valley, uh, maybe at least in part, not in a severe way, but it could be noticeable if you step on that at the wrong time. So be careful and watch your step with light amounts of freezing rain possible there. There's a better chance of seeing some heavier amounts of freezing rain, maybe as much as a quarter inch as you get a little bit further west into the Yukon and Kuskokwim Delta regions. Up north, you can see the tight packing of the pressure gradients across the Chukchi Coast and across the Beaufort Sea Coast. It will be in this area where the snow is falling and beginning to blow that we have that winter weather advisory. And once again, you can see the arrows crossed here indicating the threat for blowing snow across the Chukchi Coast. We'll be watching for pockets of freezing rain through the Denali region again in the Deltana and Tanana Flats area. The main concern is going to be that strong and gusty wind through tonight, but uh, don't be surprised to run into a little bit of mixed precipitation there as conditions stay right there on that fringe of winter weather and summer weather. That shoulder season stuff can be kind of tricky. Rain will continue across central and northern parts of southeast and the northern Gulf. We may start to see a little bit of a break in the wet and cloudy weather briefly across south central. The next surge will come later on in the weekend. And colder air across the Bering Sea is pushing its way southward. But remember, that overall flow in the atmosphere is from the west and southwest. So it's not making a huge advance quickly to the south. It's getting more of a, a gentle nudge southward from that high pressure system across eastern Siberia. As we look into Saturday, low pressure is pushing into northwestern Alaska, the Kotzebue Sound region, seeing another push for snow. And again, storm totals there could reach upwards of uh, six to eight inches just by tonight. So we'll be watching that. And we're watching for that mixed precipitation across the northern Yukon and into the uh, central and eastern sections of the Yukon Valley up around Galena. Again, there could be an opportunity for some freezing rain there. Snow showers will continue across the eastern and northern interior, and that pressure gradient up around the northern coast is still there. Uh, areas of blowing and perhaps even drifting snow, but the winds will be the main concern that could reduce visibility at times. Winds will blow from the east generally about 35 to 40 miles per hour. Now, as you're looking southeast, you can still see a trough of low pressure lingering across the region. The winds are going to come up across southeast over the next couple days, on top of it being uh, generally uh, dreary and wet for sure. But one thing to notice here is that by Saturday, high pressure is setting in, and that should really help to remove a large threat for that heavier rainfall. In fact, that atmospheric river has just about fizzled out and pushed to the east. But with the trough of low pressure here and uh, high pressure centers close to home, there's certainly an opportunity for the winds to remain a little bit on the stronger and gusty side, especially for some of the inner channels and in that channel terrain. So keep that in mind as you're making your Saturday plans, even as the rain may be winding down in parts of southeast. Now, even to an untrained eye, of course, uh, many of you are certainly not that, but uh, certainly looking out west, you will see that we have another low pressure system here across the central and eastern chain. And that tight pressure gradient once again is building in from Kodiak Island to the Alaska Peninsula, 
all the way down to the central chain. That strong southerly flow once again is bringing in warm air and wet air to southwestern Alaska and it's starting to mix in with that colder air and that's where we get into that mixed precipitation across the lower and middle Yukon Valley. So an awful lot going on for the next several days. Make sure you're tracking the latest watches, warnings and advisories for your community at weather.gov slash Alaska. On to temperatures tonight, it's going to be pretty mild in southeast, low to mid 40s there, south central in the mid to upper 30s and lower 40s all the way down to Kodiak Island. The central interior, upper 20s to low 30s, that's after a very mild day today. And teens and 20s for the North Slope, 29 in Nome, southwest, lower to mid 30s for you, Bristol Bay, also in the mid 30s, down toward Dutch Harbor and Alaska, 40 degrees, St. Paul and St. George near 32 with a high of 43 tomorrow. Up north, it looks like mid-20s for your daytime on Friday. As you get into the central interior, mid-30s, that includes Fairbanks out west toward Galena, 35 in Nome, 32 in Shishmaref, and upper 40s and lower 50s for southeast, even with the rain and the wind. Mid-40s for south central, near 50 in Kodiak Island, and upper 40s for most of the chain and the Alaska Peninsula. Overnight lows as wind stops and starts to uh, let up a little bit. Temperatures are going to be cooler across the upper Yukon Valley and the upper Tanana Valley, teens and 20s there. South Central, we expect to see lows returning to maybe a near freezing level, 36 in Kodiak, upper 30s and lower 40s, even mid 40s for parts of southeast on Saturday morning. Uh, it looks like the Seward Peninsula will drop into the mid 20s. St. Lawrence Island, Gamble, and Savunga, you're in the upper 20s. Bristol Bay temperatures in the upper 20s to uh, near freezing, 35 in St. Paul at 43 around Unalaska and Dutch Harbor, colder for Adak and Atka. And by Saturday afternoon, we're in the 30s for most of the central and southern interior, south central in the lower to mid 40s. Southeast, near 50 degrees in many locations up north of the Brooks Range. You're back in the 20s. Barrow near 27 degrees and 35 in Nome. Colder weather is on the way. We'll talk about that, but have a look at aviation weather in a moment. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. On to aviation weather now. You can see IFR conditions will be expected across a wide area along the Yukon Valley, southwest and along the western uh, and eastern slopes of the western Alaska Range, as well as many areas along central and northern sections of southeast, all the way up into the northern Gulf Coast. And another weather system is bringing in IFR across the southern Bering Sea, uh, that not affecting a whole lot of uh, folks until it reaches the central chain. You can see that progressing eastward and kind of uh, disbanding a little bit as we get into Friday afternoon. MVFR conditions from the southwest coast all the way to the eastern chain, including Nikolsky, Dutch Harbor, and Unalaska, into the southern end of uh, the Alaska Peninsula, including areas around Sand Point. For southeast, watch for IFR to shift southward there, all the way from, uh, well, let's say, about Petersburg down toward uh, Craig and Klawak, maybe reaching into Ketchikan with uh, MVFR, but that will be transitioning toward lower ceilings and poor visibility as we go throughout the day. Look for IFR conditions across the central and eastern Brooks Range, as well as areas down in toward the Tanana uh, Valley, uh, close to Tanana itself. And the upper Yukon should remain MVFR with IFR conditions through Constabu Sound, uh, through Nome, St. Lawrence Island, Wales, Tin City, all the way out toward Amonic and uh, Nunavak Island for your Friday afternoon. As we get into Saturday, that band is moving eastward ever so slightly. IFR conditions again expected across the south-facing slopes of the central and western Brooks Range. Uh, conditions begin to improve for southeast. Look for MVFR across some of the higher terrain, including Chilkoot and White Pass. Uh, conditions improve around Prince William Sound and the Cook Inlet region, but look for MVFR around Kodiak Island and parts of the Kenai Peninsula, including all the way into the Anchorage, Matanuska, and Susitna Valleys. Uh, look for uh, MVFR around St. Paul and St. George, and IFR develops again by Saturday afternoon across the Arctic coast just offshore across the south-facing slopes of the Brooks Range for Unalakleet all the way up toward uh, the eastern end of Norton Sound and into the Nor uh, Yukon Delta as well as around the Wood Chick Chick Mountains and uh, east of the Pribilovs and parts of the central and eastern chain to about Sand Point. Here's a look at your pass conditions for your Friday. Anaktuvik and Adigan Pass we expect to remain at IFR conditions through pretty much the bulk of your Friday. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass will hold at IFR with the transition slowly toward MVFR as we go throughout your day tomorrow. Rainy Pass again more of the same IFR conditions to start your Friday and Windy Pass likely holding at MVFR through most of your Friday afternoon. Isabel Pass holding at MVFR through Friday and Mentasta Pass will start with uh, instrument flight rule conditions there as we get into Friday with some improvement as the day goes on. Tanita Pass, we expect to see VFR conditions by the end of your Friday. And for Portage Pass, some improvement, uh, but uh, MVFR conditions really through most of the day. And Chilkoot and White Pass also looking for improving conditions throughout the afternoon there, but a start at IFR is expected at this point. 
Here's a look at your Friday morning freezing levels, a clear sign that winter is trying to get organized out across the north and western sections of Alaska, but uh, summer certainly holding on. What a mess this is, but levels around uh, the mainland, anywhere from about two to 4,000 feet as you get out towards southeastern Alaska. Levels range from about six to about 10, even 12,000 feet just south of the Dixon entrance. So a lot of that warm and very wet air shifting into western Canada as we go into the weekend. And what does that do for icing? Well, there is still an isolated potential there across a large part of the mainland, anywhere from about three to 8,000 feet southward, about uh, three to six, maybe three to 8,000 feet across southwestern Alaska. The more considerable moderate threat will also be shifting off to the east. Not a whole lot going on across southeastern Alaska for icing potential as we head into your Friday. So that's good news there. The jet stream has our core of low pressure sitting out across the southern Bering Sea, driving that main push of air across the North Pacific at about 110 to almost 150 knots. High pressure now moving into the northwestern sections of uh, North America and uh, western uh, mainland U.S. And you can see that southerly flow working its way across the northern Gulf and rounding up and over southeastern Alaska, but those wind speeds are still pretty tight at 95 to 135 knots. At 9,000 feet, the broad westerly flow sweeping moisture into southeastern Alaska. Wind speeds there, 40 to 50 knots over the mainland and interior, 25 to about 35 knots. South and westerly flow continues at this level for southwestern Alaska. Wind speeds uh, slow down a little bit more across the north coast uh, with winds coming in from the east just offshore at 10 knots and then wrapping into the western side of that trough of low pressure uh, coming in from the north and northeast across the Bering Sea at 3,000 feet. Very similar pattern here with high pressure trying to work its way into the mix around the Gulf of Alaska and slowing the winds down ever so slightly, but still guiding those in from west to east for southeastern Alaska, slowing down across south central and southwestern Alaska, 10 to 25 there. The interior looking at winds around 15 knots on the south side of the trough, but easterlies pick up here. Notice the wind speeds picking up around the Chukchi coast and then descending through the Bering at about 25 to 30. Turbulence potential will focus on areas across the southern coast and across southwestern Alaska through the central and western chain. Uh, most of those areas are still going to be looking at uh, levels below about five to 6,000 feet, and we'll be watching for a brief area of isolated severe across the central and southern parts of southeast below 6,000 feet. That's a look at your aviation forecast. We'll be back with the rest of your marine weather and an update on the sea ice edge here in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. Legends in the Sky. Hey there, stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regis, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. We're here to help you find your way around the sky tonight. The ancient stargazers had a lot of imagination. When they looked at the stars, they connected the dots and pictured people, animals, rivers, and even entire scenes. And in the fall evening sky, if you have an ancient imagination, you can see a king and a queen, a prince and a princess, two monsters and a flying horse. It's going to get crowded up there, but we can walk you through it. Okay, we have our skies set up for 9 p.m. facing northeast. About halfway up in the sky, you'll find the five familiar stars that look like a letter W. This is the beautiful Queen Cassiopeia. Now stretch your imaginations a little and see if you can make out a queen of Ethiopia sitting on her throne. Hmm. Sorry, I guess I don't have that much imagination. But once you find her, she is the central character of our story. Legend has it that Cassiopeia bragged about her beauty way too much. In fact, one day she said, now get this, she said, I'm more beautiful than all the mermaids in the ocean. <laughs> Yikes. That got Poseidon, the god of the sea, super mad. He confronted Cassiopeia's husband, King Cepheus, whose five fainter stars are up and to the left of his wife. The stars look like an upside-down house. For insulting the gods, Cassiopeia had to give up her one and only daughter, the princess Andromeda, as a sacrifice. Basically, they had to chain Andromeda to a big rock in the ocean and let Poseidon's pet sea monster eat her. You can find Andromeda to the right of Cassiopeia. Her stars look more like a skinny letter A. A for Andromeda. Exactly. Andromeda also houses the closest spiral galaxy to our Milky Way. It's called the Andromeda Galaxy because you can find it near her right hip star. Of course, if you've lived in a light polluted area, you won't be able to see this galaxy. However, if you're out in the country, you might see it looking like a little cloud barely visible to the naked eye. 
With binoculars, you can resolve a lot more of its cloudy nature. And with a telescope, you can see it as a long, fuzzy blur. This is a galaxy with one trillion stars that you can't see with the naked eye. Space is scary big. Now, before the sea monster makes his appearance, we must introduce our hero, Perseus. As the story goes, Perseus, that very morning, slew the wicked Gorgon Medusa. She's the one with snakes for hair and turns you to stone with just one look. Looking at her reflection in his shield, Perseus chopped off her head, then put her head in a bag for safekeeping. Later that afternoon, as he was flying through the air on his winged sandals, with the infamous bag at his side, Perseus happened to spy a young maiden in distress, our Princess Andromeda. Now, we're facing east at 10 p.m., and Perseus appears on the scene. You can find him as a squiggle of stars below Andromeda's feet. The sea monster, a constellation named Cetus, is just rising in the east-southeast. I think his stars look like a recliner chair. That doesn't seem so scary. Anyway, Perseus yells to Andromeda, close your eyes. Then he closes his eyes, reaches into the bag, and pulls out Medusa's severed head. Shows it to the sea monster, who takes one look at it, and poof, turns to stone. Perseus saves the day. Wow, what a starry story. A king, a queen, a prince, and princess, two monsters, and oops, we forgot the flying horse. Oh yeah, Pegasus was supposedly born from this epic battle as Perseus held out Medusa's head. Now, this is gross. Some of her blood fell into the water and turned magically into Pegasus the flying horse. Oh, come on, that's too weird. Agreed, but that's the kind of imagination we're dealing with when we learn about the constellations and when you keep looking, looking up. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Time now for a quick check of your sea ice update. And ice is rapidly growing across the Beaufort Sea Coast. You can see new ice and concentrations above 80% off the central and eastern Beaufort Sea Coast, stretching all the way to Barrow and uh, lesser amounts of new ice along the Chukchi coast. Uh, the thought is that even with some of the winds that we're seeing across the Beaufort, that ice will continue to expand rapidly across the region. The only caveat to that would be is if a lot of warm air moves up there suddenly, but that would probably be a short-term event. So, uh, for the very latest information, you can head to weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice for the latest forecast and the details through the remainder of the season. Here's a look at the forecast for southeast. As we get into tomorrow, gales will be found across the inside waters there, 35 to 40 knots. A general flow from the south and southeast with gusts to 45, even 50 knots there as you head into the Lynn Canal and through Stevens Passage. Uh, a little more gentle onshore flow coming in from the west and southwest with winds around 25 to 30 knots, seas ranging from 15 to about 18 feet across the north and eastern gulf. For Saturday, uh, the winds lay down a little bit more. You get into more of a north and westerly flow, about 10 to 15 knots, even 20 knots outside of the Dixon entrance doesn't seem so bad after the stronger winds tomorrow. Seas ranging from about 10 to 11 feet across the outside and 2 to 3 foot seas return across the inside waters 10 to 15 knots there from the north and northwest on Saturday. For south central inside of Prince William Sound you'll be looking at southerlies around 15 knots with a 3 foot sea, 12 foot seas across the northern gulf and outside of Hitchinbrook entrance. Uh, south and westerlies through Cook Inlet and you're looking at 7 to 8 foot seas for the most part there on a 25 to 30 knot wind. As we get into Saturday winds continue to diminish 15 to 20 knots in some areas south of Clam Gulch. South and easterly winds across the Barrens with 5 to 8 foot seas there. Northeasterlies light inside of Prince William Sound and a 2 foot sea there. And southeasterlies in the northern Gulf 10 knots with 8 to 9 foot seas for Saturday. 
across Bristol Bay. 25 knots with a westerly flow, 9 foot seas expected. South and westerlies coming up to Kodiak Island. 25 to 30 knots on either side with 8 foot seas inside of Shelikoff Strait and 13 foot seas on the eastern side. Uh, that diminishes as we get into Saturday. Southerlies continue. We'll see 15 to 20 around Kodiak Island and southeasterly sweeping over the Alaska Peninsula region with 6 to 7 foot seas around the Bering Sea coast and 9 to 12 foot seas for the Pacific coast as we start up the weekend. As you look at the Aleutians, look for a south and westerly winds there for the central and eastern chain. 25 to 30 knots, 12 to 13 foot seas are expected there with 9 to 11 foot seas for the central and eastern coastlines of the Bering Sea coast out west. 25 knots or so with 11 to 13 foot seas on Friday. And as we get into Saturday, you'll notice those winds turning to the north. 30 knots with an 11 uh, foot sea around Kiska to Attu. And then further eastward, 8 foot seas across the central and eastern chain. Anywhere from 9 to 16 foot seas. The highest, of course, out across the Pacific coastline of the eastern chain on that stronger 35 knot wind from the south and east on Saturday. For the west coast, westerlies will become a little bit more uh, predominant uh, north of Nunavak Island out towards St. Matthew, 15 knots with 6 to 8 foot seas. Southerlies around the Provo Lobs, 25 knots with a 9 foot sea there. And westerlies coming into the Kuskokwim Bay with 9 foot seas on that 25 knot wind. And look for southwesterlies wrapping into Norton Sound there. Also seeing some new ice growth around Amonic all the way into the coastal areas of the upper Norton Sound region and along Seward Peninsula. So changes happening there as well. For Saturday, south and westerly winds will pick up a little bit more into Norton Sound and south of St. Lawrence Island. Look for 15 knot winds blowing offshore from uh, just north of Nunavak Island and Hooper Bay to more of a southwesterly flow coming up from the Kuskokwim Delta toward Nunavak Island. 25 knots there with a 9 foot sea and easterlies blowing into St. Paul and St. George. 20 knots with a 7 foot sea as we get it into your Saturday. For the North Slope, easterlies again will be an issue, especially along the coast, and it could reduce visibility with snow in the region. 10 foot seas along the coast in the open waters and uh, 8 to 12 foot seas there. Uh, from the Chukchi coast down into Kotzebue Sound on that 15 to 30 knot wind. For Saturday, south and westerly winds will be blowing through the region. 7 to 10 foot seas expected on Saturday. And easterlies diminish just a little bit across the Beaufort Sea, 20 to 25 with 5 to 9 foot seas there in the open waters. Let's recap the weather. We've got a lot going on for winter weather tonight. Accumulating snow should start to wind down briefly around the Kobuk and Noatak Valleys and the Cello Valley. A look for mixed precipitation across the upper, uh, the lower, middle, and the upper Yukon Valley, for that matter, with accumulating snow across the upper Yukon, and it looks like rain showers will continue for south and west, with strong winds starting to slow down for south central. A high wind warning will continue until about 10 o'clock for the Alaska Range, and a flood advisory is posted for the northern parts of southeast, where some locations in southeast could pick up as much as three to six, maybe even seven inches of rain. There's a lot going on with your Alaska weather. Check it out anytime online. Thanks for watching. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.